what are the best settings for this monitor. And by best settings, I mean the settings which I like to use. Various targets correspond to the targets I will go for in my reviews. And they work on my units and according to my own preferences. Everyone will have their own preferences, individual units differ, etc. So the first thing to consider is your preset mode, or really an important thing to consider is your preset mode. So the default setting standard, it's pretty well balanced overall, but you might want to change your color channels, for example, which you can't do with standard. Game one, game two, and game three can be configured in exactly the same way, and so can custom color, but you have more options. So with custom color, you can change the gain, which is your main red, green, and blue color channels. There's an offset control, which sort of modifies the gamma curve for red, green, and blue, and you can tweak that a bit if you want, or make these changes if you wish, but most people won't really need to concern themselves with this. Hue, and again, this is something which most people don't want to tweak, but if you do want to tweak it, you can. There's red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Quite a nice wallpaper for showing the effect of that yellow channel change there. And in bits of the menu like this, it can be a little bit confusing. How do you actually exit it? Well, you have to just keep pressing left until it goes away. The saturation. So this is, again, six axis saturation. So you've got red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow. If you increase this, it will pull shades closer to the edge of the gamut without expanding the gamut itself. So you do lose shade variety. But you can do that if you wish. You can also decrease the saturation according to your own preferences. So again, you've got six axis control, which is good in this respect. You can make everything monochrome by having these all at zero, if you wish. And again, to exit, I have to keep pressing left. Game one, game two, and game three, they're the same as custom color, but there's also a dark stabilizer control. Although actually, if you go to custom color, you can also configure that. It just isn't in quite the same place. So a little bit confusing, but anyway, the point is you can configure all of these different presets as you want, and then you can quickly switch between them. So you can have various different sets of settings. I'm just gonna briefly talk about the remaining presets because there's not really too much of interest there. FPS gives quite a kind of oversaturated look with low gamma. Doesn't look nice, but competitively speaking, you might find this useful. Sets the dark stabilizer to one by default, for example, and it does change the gamma. MOBA slash RTS, that gives a deeper look, so it looks like the gamma is much higher. RPG, it just makes different adjustments. Sports, different adjustments again. But remember with these ones, the ones without a little arrow at the end there, there are no additional settings you can configure, so you can't change the color channel or the gamma or anything like that with these particular presets. And in terms of gamma, it's the creator preset. I'm sorry that I didn't mention this before because this is actually an important preset which some people definitely like to use. That allows you to control the color space. You can set it to DCI-P3 or sRGB. As I explained in the review, these color settings, they do work well to clamp the gamut closer to the target. So DCI-P3 does clamp well to DCI-P3 with a little bit more under coverage than the native gamut. It also gives a green tint, which you can't control in the OSD, so you can't change the color channels. sRGB doesn't have that tint, as I explore in the review, and it does clamp well to sRGB. So this is a good sRGB emulation mode, and this is certainly a setting which will have quite broad appeal for people who want the sort of, as the developers intend, look within the sRGB color space. There's also a gamma control if you're using Creator with DCI-P3 or sRGB. 2.2 is the default, but you can set it to 2.6, 2.4, 2.0, or 1.8 as well. Of course, what I would have liked to have seen is color channel controls in the Creator preset, not just reserved to Game 1, Game 2, Game 3, and custom color. There should really be a preset where you can control everything, but they decided not to do that. So yes, the Creator mode sRGB certainly could be a best setting for some people. And I do like to explore that, but I like to do a lot of my testing with the full native gamut. So I like to just use game one. And the only change I made, actually, I didn't have to change the gains at all on my unit. It's all set to 100 apiece because it was very well balanced in terms of white point and green channel balance. This might not be the case with all units, and I suspect it won't be, but I was quite lucky in that respect. So what I actually changed was I reduced the brightness. So I reduced it from the default, which I believe is 75% to 62%.
and that got close to my 160 nit target, which I tend to go for for consistency in my reviews. But of course, everyone will have their own preferences when it comes to brightness, and it does depend on your own lighting environment. Switching the attention over to HDR now, there's a smart HDR and a Dolby Vision setting, which are both applicable under HDR. I'm just feeding an SDR signal at the moment, so it doesn't matter what you select here under SDR, it's not going to change your image. But if the monitor is fed an HDR signal, then it does change the image, as you would suspect it would. So I've just enabled HDR. I'm on shadow of the Tomb Raider. Under HDR, it's just more interesting for you to look at than the desktop. There's very little you can configure or personalize in most cases. So if you try and change a preset mode, it just tells you currently processing HDR content. So yeah, you can't do that. So really it's the smart HDR setting and the Dolby Vision setting which you have to pay attention to. The vast majority of content is HDR10. As I explore in the review, you don't want to be enabling Dolby Vision for that. So really these should be reserved for when you're actually viewing Dolby Vision content. But you might happen to like how things look with these different settings. So, you know, feel free to use them if you want. But I think most people are going to want to use smart HDR set to HDR peak 1000 which leverages the full capabilities of the monitor and is suitable for HDR10 content, which is the vast majority of HDR content you will consume. Some people may prefer the Display HDR True Black setting, and this will limit your luminance and give you a more consistent experience because you don't get the same kind of peaks of brightness and ABL automatic brightness limiter that is a thing on OLEDs like this. It's all explored in the review graphically. It makes a bit more sense there. Just thought I'd mention that some people may prefer this for a more consistent experience and if you don't particularly want the stronger brightness from your HDR experience. The remaining settings, well there's custom colour HDR if you really like to tweak things, but the remaining settings that I'm talking about now, they do not give you the same kind of brightness peaks as the HDR Peak 1000 mode, so they're more similar to Display HDR True Black, but technically not as well calibrated. But with the custom colour HDR, you can mess around with contrast if you wish, hue and saturation. It's the game HDR, again, that's kind of like your true black setting, except calibration's a bit different and it seems to change the white point a bit. To my eye, it looks a little bit warmer. Movie HDR appears a bit cooler, on my unit anyway. And there's desktop, which appears, again, slightly different. So I'm not going to go into these in too much detail. I don't think most people are going to want to use these particular settings. Again, it's really the HDR Peak 1000, Display HDR True Black, depending on your brightness preferences, really. Or if you're using Dolby Vision, then one of the Dolby Vision modes. As explored in the review, when I was actually looking at Dolby Vision content, it didn't matter what I set this to. It appeared to have the same effect. But if you're viewing HDR10 content and you've got Dolby Vision selected, then these do make a difference. Bright and game seemed pretty similar. Dark was darker in general, not as bright. So again, it really just comes down to your own preferences, but for actual Dolby Vision content, it doesn't seem to matter what you select here as long as you have something selected. So the only other thing that's probably worth mentioning is there is console mode. That's grayed out, I believe, when you're on the PC, or maybe it's just grayed out because I'm using DisplayPort. Now, I don't use games consoles, and from what I've seen from other reviewers and other users, even if you are using a games console, at least a PS5 or Xbox Series X, it seems that leaving this disabled is absolutely fine, and actually some people seem to think that's the best experience. So I'm not entirely sure what the console mode does. Maybe it changes the EDID, maybe it's for compatibility with older games consoles, or does something else. So I mean, just have a play with that yourself if you're a console user but don't be afraid to just leave that console mode off. Oh, and sorry about the lack of tripod. I just remembered I didn't mention my Game 2 setting or why would I be using that sometimes. The reason for that is that's my low blue light setting. I like to use that in the evening for my own viewing comfort. And all I do is I really set it up in the same way as Game 1, so my test settings. But I change it so the green channel is reduced a bit to 85%, blue to 70%. This gives a really nice colour temperature, around 4000K, so this is a very effective low blue light setting, has a good sort of neutral look to it, it doesn't look overly yellow or green or anything like that, so it's quite well balanced visually, and it just works nicely. But these are just my preferences. If you want to create your own low blue light setting, have a play yourself.